This program is brought to you by Dolku Media. Fixing South Sudan, ideas for the new nation. With award-winning journalist Mading Mor. Absolutely. Honorable Ashwin, as you can see, the ideas of the initiatives are varied. The July, uh, on July 8th, uh, the clashes in J1 took place, which was very unfortunate. Including uh, country-specific ones, uh, which uh, the rebellion continues. Fixing ideas for the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, a debate about the wisdom of honoring Sudanese President Omar al Bashir. Was the decision to award His Excellency al Bashir a doctorate of philosophy and peace diplomacy from the University of Juba justified? or was it politically motivated? And is the award a good idea for fixing Sasran? And joining us for the show is Professor John Apurwad Akech, the Vice Chancellor of the nation's premier higher institution of learning, the University of Juba. Sir, we are elated to welcome you to this program. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the program. In the lead up to the uh, October 31st celebrations, the University of Juba put forward a motion to the board and to the Senate to consider whether to award the Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. And the answer was to the affirmative. Why? Well, um, thank you. Uh, you know very well, University of Juba, uh, one of our goals is service to community. University of Juba uh, is a force for good, a force for peace for the nation. And we saw it befitting to honor uh, President Bashir. And mostly what actually triggered it is, was his latest intervention in a stalled peace agreement, which the parties could not reach for several months. But yet it was his intervention in the last minute that allowed the parties in the end to quickly close the gap between them and to reach agreement. So that was a really a big trigger. And then we look back as a university at his record. From the time he became the chairman of the National Salvation Revolution in 1989, uh, President Bashir uh, asked John Garang if the aim of South Sudan was self-determination. This was, as we all know, was turned out by Dr. John Garang because his aim was a struggle for New Sudan. Yet in the end, starting from Abuja to Nairobi Declaration of Principles to Mashakos, uh, South also decided in the end, especially after 1991, that self-determination was going to be on the menu. And so we think he, his leadership of Sudan allowed the South and Sudan or North Sudan to reach an agreement that actually end 50 years of conflict. That is a great credit to him. You know that word was controversial and would you say in your mind there is no doubt that it was the right thing to do? I, have, I don't think it was. I think South Sudan need to be appreciative that the party that al-Bashir led actually fought the hardest. South Sudan also fought the hardest. In the end, you know, we know wars end in peace. And even if we have been um, ardent enemies with Sudan uh, for 50 years, it was not for anything but for political reasons. We needed our own freedom. We needed to be able to organize our own house. We need to have independent of choice to choose the development we want, the culture we want. And under his leadership, that happened. Although we fought for 22 years, um, I think 
in the end, uh, Sudan and South Sudan are neighbors. We need to actually appreciate what is good for one another and build on that. Let me do a recap of the reasons that have been given. And one of them is the pursuit of a Bij uh, Buja peace initiative of 1994 and Bashir signing of Machakos Protocol in 2002, and which led to the signing of the CPA and was the first to recognize uh, the independence declaration and the current brokerage of the Khartoum Peace Agreement, which has led to the revitalized uh, agreement or resolution of conflict in the Republic of South Sudan. Now, let's talk about the reasons against, because there was some reservation, and some of the reasons are, are as follows. Uh, prolonged civil war leading to death of 2.5 million South Sudanese and dis displacement of thousands uh, of people in refugee camps in neighboring countries and abroad, failure to implement their BIA protocol and popular consultations for Southern Kordofan and Blue Nile, encroachment on South Sudanese mineral-rich territories. This is the Sudanese encroachment on South Sudanese mineral-rich territories, including Panto, past association uh, and harboring of South Sudanese rebels, failure to demarcate the South Sudanese borders and constant closure of trade routes, depriving South Sudan of key needed imports and indictment by the International Criminal Court for war crime committed in Darfur. Are you telling me that the reasons you have cited are far greater than what I'm telling you? Um, yes, in a way, and really very much so. If you can see that the war that has been going on for 50 years ended with independence of South Sudan, I think this is a great achievement which we need to appreciate. We have been fighting for the last five years, and our development you know, has actually stopped. His intervention in the end also, and his leadership, uh, allowed the party to close the gaps. So I think these are great achievements. And by all, by all means, there is nobody in the world that can be said that they are perfect. And problems in the world will never end. And problems between South Sudan and North Sudan will exist. However, it is how you handle these problems, how you solve them. Now, um, all this war has not been going under Bashir, as I said. He has his part. Is it your considered view that he is a champion of peace? And this is the butcher of, of southern Sudan. Uh, well, I think he fought. We also fought. We also were. They could also call us butchers if they want. Because war is war. So let us, you know, uh, forget that and then look at the positive element. In fact, by appreciating, you know, um, President Bashir for his achievement to um, allow the South to exercise the right to self-determination, to recognize it, and to work with South Sudan to bring peace in South Sudan, and also to improve relationship between Sudan and South Sudan. They Suppose are here. that Bashir did not recognize the independence of South Sudan. So what? Would it have stopped the cause of the people? Because this was, an CPA was internationally uh, witnessed and monitored and supported. You know what? I think it takes two to make peace. It takes two to make peace. And he, among others, actually said, South Sudan has a right to self-determination. And he, a few months ago, I mean a few months after he has taken over, but South Sudan didn't take the opportunity. So in 1989, he asked um, Dr. John Garam whether you know, allowing the South to go uh, was the option. I understand that the Jorgen didn't trust You him. seem to think that it was a choice, but it wasn't a choice. People fought for the independence. Riyadh Macha signed an agreement, and uh, so is Dr. Lama called. He signed an agreement for self-determination. Did it lead to self-determination? Well, it did not. Well, let me tell you this. You might try to downplay that. You might try to transfer leadership, but the outcomes, whatever the way they came, must be appreciated. And uh, the benefit 
are there. So really, then I'll move to something else. There is a benefit, and you think that there is a positive impact. And what is the overall impact it, of the award? Yeah. Does and it create smoother relations between the two countries? And it is not countries? me, really. It is the Senate. Right. Okay. It's there the is, university. Yeah, there is one Madingor, and then there is 120, you know, senators. So really, um, you cannot, you know, uh, uh, question their judgment. We think it was the right thing to do. We think it is going to encourage President Bashir to actually do more in places uh, like South Korea, Blue Nile, Darfur, and you know Eastern Sudan. Um, look, Let, let's talk about the optics of the award. It was given at the celebration. There were multitudes of people who had come to witness uh, and celebrate the signing, which, which brought uh, Dr. Riyak Machar and others to Juba procedurally. That was wrong. It should have been given in a commencement. That is how it is done. No, I think it is, you know, we when you know, don't actually question the question proceedings. Well, that is how it is done. That is your opinion. It is awarded during commencement. No, you know, this is... Not the outside way. the university no, premises. That is, you know, we know what we are talking about. That is your opinion. And you are entitled to your opinion. And by the way, do not really care much about procedures. You really have to care about outcomes. And I'm really, you know, uh, about that. You don't care about the procedure. Let's talk about the fact that you don't even have a law in place for you to be able to award anyone. Who and said that? Do you have a law passed in place for you to yeah. give awards? Okay. South Sudan, I mean, University of Yuba has awarded President Nelson Mandela. But doesn't it mean that you have an, a law in place? You let, don't have a functional law in place. Let me finish. Let me finish. Uh, this award actually went to Nelson Mandela. It went to Jimmy Carter. It went to Kofi Annan. It went to Yasser Arafat and others. And in 2016, we awarded to the Japanese ambassador, Kiyomas Higo. So all we had to put when we came, because the university has moved a lot, we have to bring out the, uh, the statue for awarding the uh, the, that kind of work. So there are four points there, including uh, good work done for the world and humanity. But work the key peace. thing I'm saying is finish. that the law is not Let me finish. What, what do you mean by law? University, our university, what we have are statutes. We don't have law. Our statutes passed by the Senate. And when you award an honorary degree, uh, you have the condition set that in statute. And in 2016, before we award it, you know, uh, the Japanese ambassador, the statute was passed by the Senate, and the, the, the statute defined the criteria, who actually wins, I mean, get this award. So for us at the university, our statutes are the laws. The Senate is the body is that, that actually makes regulations of award of degrees and honors. Let's take a break from here. Thank you. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, passport photo, stand-up comedy, printing, drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dolco Media Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor, and with me is Professor John Apurwat Akech, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Juba. And we are talking about the wisdom of awarding an honorary degree to Sudanese President Omar al Bashir. We come for the final round. And is the award a good idea for fixing South Sudan? Yes, uh, we think so. It's going to encourage President Bashir to do more uh, to address uh, the outstanding issues in the CPA, including um, the problem of BI, uh, problems in Darfur, South, uh, South Kordofan, and Blue Nile. So I think um, we believe that if um, you want to encourage somebody, actually you have to appreciate the work that has been done so that more can actually be done. The amazing thing is that 
uh, President Bashir was going to be awarded alongside our President, General Salfa Kir Mayadid, and he had a very interesting stance. He deferred his award until the agreement is implemented. And is it really not the point? How can you award someone for an, for an agreement that has not been implemented? Um, and will you regret later on if the agreement does not get implemented? Um, I think the, the award um, to our president of um, doctorate in conflict resolution um, was justified. Um, I'm not yeah. questioning the award for the president, yeah. but I'm saying, do you think that it is the right thing to do to award after the agreement is uh, implemented? In other words, was it not premature? No, I'm, actually I'm coming there. Uh, when the, this award was given, it was not only because of the Khartoum Peace Agreement. It is actually recognized uh, President uh, Salva Kiir Mayadid uh, contribution to uh, liberation struggle of South Sudan from the time when he was actually almost a teenager in the two wars he was involved. And he was instrumental in actually, when you look at the citation, we haven't, he was actually ins instrumental. He stuck by the side of um, Dr. Yon Garang. And, you know, his insistence and his adoption of idea of New Sudan held, allow the movement to hold together in face of many internal rebellions. So when you come to read his citation, you will be amazed about I'm his contribution. I'm not talking about the citation for the president. Yeah, I'm but saying. But whether Bashir award was premature, given because his only significant contribution would be the normalization of relationship between the two countries mm. and achieving a final settlement. Yeah, for, you are you for, are changing your questions. You are changing your questions. You were saying that um, we are awarding uh, the you know President Salva Kiir Mayadid uh, an award before the implementation. That's how I understand. He declined you know, to receive his let award let us, let until let the agreement is uh, fully one, implemented. No, he didn't say that. What he said he will actually in another occasion. That's what he said in another occasion. So uh, he wants President Bashir to have his chance to shine alone. I think that was the wisdom. He didn't tell me, but that is our reading. He doesn't want to, uh, to take any uh, glimmer away from it. So I think that was his wisdom. That's what I think. But you think that it was that? No. He said he would do it in another occasion. Think about what you are doing. You are setting a precedent where you are single sourcing awards. And what you do is you offer someone in other universities it's, it's a rigorous process. It's not a last-minute decision as you made it because really it was only up to the minute. That is when you had to ram the whole thing through the Senate. Well, I think um, we actually follow due process. We will follow due process. It goes through this board. It goes to the Senate. It doesn't matter. But it, it happened long. emergently. It is not like that. When you have a sitting, you know, you, you discuss it for an hour. When we discuss the one for... Uh, it doesn't take a long time. It takes about an hour for people actually to talk. The same thing. You know, so really do not talk about, you know, it wasn't a five minutes decision. It was proper sitting and the citation was there. So it cannot be disqualified based on the time it took us. You know, it is the Senate, it is the Senate decision, it is valid anytime. And as I understand, the idea did not originate from the university. It was sold to the university by some politicians. Uh, it's stunning. No, not really. That's your opinion. What, what do you mean, my opinion? No, that is your opinion. That's not true. You know, university initiates these matters, including the award to the president. So if anybody has told you that, then you are wrong. Before you had a chance mm. to issue the award, it was leaked in the cartoon press that Omar Bashir was going to be awarded. Yes. And... Mm -hmm. What does it say about how we handle our affairs, that you did not handle it in a confidential way, or the fact that some interested parties were the ones who pushed their agenda? Uh, well, you know, you, are, you really are depending on hearsay, and hearsay cannot actually fix us to that. You really have to... I understand your point that uh, there were issues that uh, are unresolved, they have not been completed CPA, that there are people who are cynical. I take that point. 
But if you are into hearsay, I think that is going to take us away from the, uh, you know, the newspapers can say whatever they want. When you actually give a word, you, look, you go out and look for information from formal side. Uh, and so you tell uh, the embassy uh, of Sudan to provide some facts that we may not know. We ask the president to provide some facts about the president which we may not know. And then we amalgamate what we know from the other facts. Because sometimes there are good things people have done. And you will not be, it is a bit about research. So uh, as a matter of procedure, anyone who is going to be given an award, if we choose now to award you, we will actually tell you. But beforehand. you seem to think that it's a simple process of the board and the Senate sitting without even the public knowing about it, without any transparency no. around it. In other countries, signatures are collected and the decision is opposed. No, no, and so the I, university I, is inclined uh, to, 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 to revoke you, their award. You are a journalist and you are just making up. That's not the way it happens. Uh, university, uh, somebody, anybody, you know, in a uh, community, somebody within university can initiate an idea. And we'll say Madingor has done wonderful things. And then we say, okay. So we look at those facts. We, uh, uh, we actually um, put them together. We go to the Senate. And, you know, if the Senate agrees, then Madingor would be awarded a doctorate, for example. So that is how it happens. Anybody can initiate it. The award you know? can happen. Things do change. And we are not sticking to the past. We are looking forward to the future. But I find it tragic that in your citation, you downplayed the history, the negative history that we have between the two countries. Some of our fathers died because of a ship, and that is not acknowledged at all. It's as if we just sprang up from nowhere, and yeah. there was a revolutionary process that happened. Yeah. I think, you know, when you, the, the difference on political issues actually is not really... Um, it does not it, matter. I think you need to give me a chance to talk. Otherwise, you know, you can say anything you want. If you want our opinion, why we gave awards, uh, the difference between North and South Sudan were political and they were political resolved. There are issues that still bind us together. Um, they accuse South Sudan of supporting rebellion, in, you know, in and descend in the north. We accuse them of harboring, you know, uh, the, our dissidents. Um, but in the end, you know, the, anybody who is, uh, have political descent would run to the other country. There's nothing Bashir can do. Anybody from the north who actually had descent there runs to South Sudan. There's nothing we can do. And then the best way that uh, nations have been doing it is actually bring people together. We can help as a country uh, to allow uh, Sudan to have peace in Blue Nile, have peace in uh, Darfur, to have peace in, you know, in Southern, you know, Kordofan, to play the role like they have just done, so that they, our brothers there also can have peace, and Sudan have peace, so that the two countries can move on. Uh, there's a lot to be gained by um, trading with Sudan, by cultural exchange, by intellectual exchange. I think this is something we need to move on, Madin from here, this repeating the history. This is the history, there's nothing that can be done. You know, nobody has, you know, wars, you know, um, in, in, you know, World War War, Second World War, people fought, but the country that fought, uh, you know, had relations. Japan was bombed, you know, millions of, uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people died. But Japan now, in America, after the war, um, you know, America helped actually build Japan, you know, giving out, you know, martial loans, uh, to, to build them. That's how it happens. Last thing on this, do you think that in the future you may have to be in a position of revoking their word because of something that happened? For instance, God forbid, the two countries goes back to war because of the issues that are not resolved. No, you, you don't revoke these things. You actually award what has been done. You don't actually talk about the future. You know, you actually, if you did something based on something that is not true, then that could be the reason. But normally it is the institution that actually get the facts. So it is the institution that is committed. It is one way process. It cannot be revoked. It is based it is based on what you know has been done, not what would be done. And you have been at the helm of the University of Juba and as we said, higher institution of learning, prestigious in South Sudan. What would you say you have done to fix South Sudan? Have you fixed it? 
Um, universities, you know, as a role, they, we actually train manpower. We, we've been, um, last four years, we, if you can remember very well, we did graduations for the graduation ceremonies. Every time we graduate, you know, thousands of students. Uh, one of the achievements at University of Uber is, is stability. The person we got in first year has actually now graduated uh, last time we had it. So four years of continuous stability. Uh, we have been trying to keep the university going in the face of a lot of uh, serious <coughs> political and economic challenges. Um, and so uh, we have improved, for example, um, the, the number of staff at the university, despite the fact that uh, people are leaving uh, recently because of economic crisis. So we think that stabilizing university and expanding, we have expanded on master programs, so uh, from four uh, postgraduate degrees, we have close to 20 postgraduate degrees now. We have also introduced upgrading programs, which have never happened before. So um, we, we think we are going well. And uh, we are doing our part to, as an institution of uh, higher learning to train uh, you know, human capital for our country. Will you succeed country. in fixing South Sudan? Um, South Sudan will succeed when a lot of people are doing a small positive steps. So we are doing our part and you know, we cannot fix it all alone, but we are contributing to fix South Sudan by uh, fulfilling the mandate that we have. One of our um, you know, motto we said, inventing the future, transforming society. So as a university, we are committed to national economic empowerment and social transformation through research, education, innovation and service to the community. What, is, that what is one achievement are you most proud of since you took the leadership of the uh, university? Uh, many, really. It's just like saying that, you know, which are you like? I think, you know, it is not a single achievement. Uh, it is many. But the most important thing, which is actually shows that we are doing well, is the stability. So when the place is stable, you know, a lot of things are happening. Uh, and let me tell you this. The student union, you know, was brought back. The students, you know, if you go to University of now, you find the students really, uh, they, they, they stay as colleagues, not as tribes as you would. So you see a very lively. Uh, the other day, um, I was hearing people, you know, relating, and I said, what's going on? They told me that the students of medicine, you know, have finished, and the diploma students have finished. This is very nice sound And it brings joy to you. A lot. And, I was very happy. And that is fixing today. It is. Thank you very much for Thank coming to the program. Thank you very much. Program. Thank you for having me. Thank you.